So, uh, hello everyone. Um, I'm Leonie and I'm currently about to finish my master's degree in geoinformatics here at the University of Augsburg, Germany. And yeah, I actually have to hand in my, my master thesis next week. So now is the perfect time to, uh, yeah, show what I've been up to over the last few months. So, what was my initial idea and motive for this thesis? I wanted to combine two very hot topics uh, that are around right now. So everything surrounding supply chains, um, especially here in Germany and Europe with all those regulations, it's all over the news. And on the other hand, everything that surrounds knowledge graphs and graph databases for, yeah, a technical toy to, to play around. And uh, yeah, since I'm coming from the field of geoinformatics, I was quite upset to see that mm, only so little geodata was involved right now for uh, evaluating the risks in, in the current tools. So I wanted to change this and also to, to overcome the limits of Excel spreadsheets. Uh, yeah. So what were the goals for the project? Um, I, I wanted to model a supply chain in its entirety and also its interactions with uh, geo events that are going on or geo risks. And I also wanted to look yeah, at, at the, all the stages of a supply chain, so not only the beginning or the end. So how, how far can I get? And uh, therefore develop a data model that gives different experts the chance to look at the supply chain network from their expert views. For this, of course, I needed uh, lots and lots of data. Uh, therefore, I was um, super happy that Deuta collaborated with me on this project from every, as a, Deuta is uh, the best German backpack company. And, um, from them, I got their supply list down to the to the yarn and also the materials that are involved in the supply chain. Um, I also to get some geo risk factors. I used the WWF risk filter suite. It's an online tool where you can uh, upload the locations of your factories and then you get general risk indicators for biodiversity risk and water risk related to um, a seascape that is near your factory location. Um, to also involve like a political point of view um, on risk, I use information from the German Federal Foreign Office. They provide information about travel warnings or general warnings for different countries. And now for the real geo data, um, in, my, in my knowledge graph, I used um, S3 um, Living Atlas of the World, where I used data on current hurricanes, earthquakes, and flooding events, as well as uh, data involving anti-shipping attacks. Um, from Deuta, I also got the internal risk evaluation. So information they get uh, regarding their products risk or company risk or country risk, something like that. And yeah, then we've got social risks. I thought maybe you can capture them by using headlines, um, searching for, for terms in the native language uh, of a country and regarding some violations, therefore use Newscatcher API and Yes, yeah, since I want to work with spatial data, I also need the locations of all those factories because I only got the addresses. And this was quite a challenge. I thought this would be easier, but therefore I used um, Google Maps or Open Supply Hub or trying to narrow down the address to, to get to the coordinates. And this is the heart of the project. So this was the data model uh, I ended up with. Um, so in the center is, is the materials that are produced in different factories and bought by suppliers. The, the products are made of different materials. And um, then you've got those um, geospatial relationships. And because we're talking about transparency, it's also important to know where your risk evaluation is coming from. So is it source based from the internal review or do we have risk indicators that we are using? Where are they coming from? And on the left side, you see in red the um, 
yeah, geo-risk events are used. I also included temperature and air quality um, regarding do we have some heat waves, for example, um, in terms of work safety. And there's no clear relationship to the other nodes. And um, but this is solved via spatial querying with OpenCypher. To implement the data model, I used ArcGIS Knowledge and Neo4j. Um, ArcGIS Knowledge uh, gives you the opportunity to integrate knowledge graphs directly into GIS. And what was really great for me, I was also able to use um, to work with polygons and lines as entities besides points, which I can show an example later. It makes it way more um, realistic for the impact zone of for example, earthquakes. Um, I also included the documents from the uh, internal risk evaluation as PDFs um, directly into the graph. And uh, but unfortunately, um, right now the implementation of OpenCypher is a bit limited. So for the complex queries, I switched to Neo4j and they had the, the same graph and they did all my querying. So to see it in action, this is the, the data model in ArcGIS Knowledge. As you can see, those are the documents included. Um, so to be near the current CSR work and then just enhance it with GIS and other data. And here is a presentation of the graph on a map. What is nice here, you can also include non-spatial relationships and non-spatial entities. Um, and then see um, some dependencies uh, on, a, on a map. Uh, most of my visual analytics investigation I, I did in here. I tried to use centrality and eigenvector to find some VIP nodes that have like very, very highly number of, of relationships to other nodes. And if they fail, this might be not so good for the whole uh, supply chain network, but also trying to identify clusters, seeing if they are material clusters. Do this, does this also apply to spatial clusters as well? Um, yeah, just to get an overview. And then my query um, investigation I did then in U4J, it's, it's the same graph, but limited uh, to point geometry. And what I also liked was the new 4J graph builder. I there uploaded the um, uh, sustainability report from the company uh, just to have like an automated generated graph based on the report and then enhance it with the supply chain data I've got from the other graph. But I did not further investigate it or um, because of time issues and I did not want to write it down for my thesis. So in the end, I tried to investigate risks and real um, geo events that occurred during the period of my thesis and then try to find out, okay, what materials were affected, which um, supplier is buying those materials, what products are made out of this and so on. Uh, resilience uh, was investigated through centrality in clusters. And because the graph is quite hard to digest for a user, I try to play around with different dashboards to to make it more usable and directly see what is what is going on. So that's the graph in its entirety on a map. I think it's super beautiful. And uh, here you can see why I liked working with polygons because the impact zone, for example, of an earthquake is um, reliant on the underlying geography. So only working with distances and points is not enough to really see, OK, what factories were, were actually impacted. Um, yeah, maybe a bit of closing words. Um, I thought it would be really hard with all those different uh, different data types. And yes, it was. but the, Graph makes it quite easy to integrate all those structured and unstructured data. Um, yeah, for the user, it was really nice to see, okay, what they could have not seen by using Excel. And um, in, in the end, this graph did not only connect the data, but it also connected people in a company from different teams to see, okay, what are the others working on? I can use this for my analysis. In the end, of course, risk does not always mean real danger. I did not include delivery routes, what I would like to do in the future. And I would also like uh, to 
uh, model more dependencies in the weather phenomena itself. For example, you've got any new um, that has impact on the, the water level. What does this mean for my ship delivery or something like that? Social risks are super hard to capture with the news API it did not quite work that well. I uh, rather um, found out about uh, some current um, other risk events uh, like lawsuits or something like that. I would also like to include more local knowledge and also compare, okay, we do have a hurricane right now, but this, what was reported in the news, what was really the impact um, of those events. So this is an ongoing research. Um, I would love to hear your feedback, your ideas, or your questions. So I would encourage you to reach out. I would love to hear from you. And thank you so much for, for listening.